Uh, I'm 13 years sober. Clap or I'll relapse. I goddamn deserve. You know what I mean? <laughs> As are all, for the people at home who have never heard of me, why the fuck is everyone going insane? <laughs> this weird person I've never seen before. Thank you so much for coming out, you guys. It's so good to see everyone. So exciting. Yes. I love this theater. I love being here. I love this stage. It's so cool looking. It does look a little bit like a David Lynch movie. Like a, <laughs> like a little bit. Like it kind of feels like there should be an Italian woman just screaming here <laughs> for no reason. And then like an elderly woman giving birth to like a fried chicken baby or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Lynch stuff. <laughs> My name is Mort. That's silly. Isn't that a goofy... <laughs> you know what I mean? Isn't that kind of a goofy move, right? <laughs> to have that as my name and act like that's real or okay, you know? <laughs> to walk around. I found out my parents almost named me Dylan. <laughs> Which is the coolest name in the world? <laughs> But instead, they went with Mort. <laughs> First of all, just don't tell me that. Like, never, you know? That's like being like, hey, buddy, happy birthday. We almost got you this Porsche, but instead we got you this picture of a guy getting his penis crushed by a garage door. <laughs> That's not as good. That's... <laughs> Yeah, no, it's okay. Also, you have to show that picture to every person who asks what your name is for the rest of your life. <laughs> All right, fine. My full name is Morton Edmund Burke. No, no, no. No, no, no. Does not deserve applause. That's not a good name for a baby. Not a good name for an adult man. It's only good for a 72-year-old middling novelist. That's the only... <laughs> That's the only name it's good. Morton Edmund Burke sounds like a Borscht Belt comedian from like the early 60s. <laughs> you know, who'd be like, you know who I don't like? That new guy, Richard Pryor. <laughs> nah, what's this guy doing telling stories about his life? <laughs> Stick to the gags, pal. <laughs> All right, now for an hour of one-liners about how I don't like my wife. <laughs> Morton Edmund Burke. That was a consortium of bullies paying my parents off. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, all right, we'll give you three grand, but here's the deal. You gotta make sure he's totally translucent, all right? Just see through. I wanna know he's nervous and see his heartbeat from a vein. You know what I mean? In the side of his head. <laughs> it should be pretty good. Give him ADD or whatever kind of shit prevents him from being able to make transitions in his stand-up set, whatever that is. <laughs> I don't know, maybe give him like a weird name or something, who knows. Okay, how about uh, Morton Edmund Burke? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, you people are sick. <laughs> I like it, I like it. You wanna get him killed, I understand. That's good, that's real good. Uh, I'm 13 years sober. Clap or I'll relapse. <laughs> I do it 
too, it'd be sad. <laughs> Very sad. Make for a sad comedy show. <laughs> it's like, but yeah, I got sober in Chicago, which is impossible. <laughs> you actually cannot get sober there. It's the drinkiest town in all of history. So, over there. I got sober in Wrigleyville. Oh. Uh, I don't know. Right next to Wrigley Field, which, if you haven't been to Wrigley Field, imagine a magical bar where you could also get sunburned. <laughs> Wrigley Field is where you go to get in a fight while you're throwing up. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just where white people go to like not admit that they're in pain. You know, they're all like, it's about the baseball. It's not about the baseball. <laughs> I was walking on the street in Wrigleyville one time and I heard my favorite sentence that I've ever heard to this day. Just a sonnet floating on the wind just entered my ear. This fair maiden, she goes, Mark, who cares if you're bucking me in an alley? <laughs> <laughs> who cares? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, all right. So I went ahead and made a list of people that would care. <laughs> just so she knows if we ever run into each other. The police? <laughs> Curious children, they will. Uh, anyone whose ears or eyes have ever worked, they will. And finally, the charitable organization Mafiasi, which is, you know, mothers against fucking in an alley and then screaming about it. They do beautiful work. I also, I got, oh, got mugged almost in Chicago. It was, this was at 3 a.m. I was walking home after an open mic, so I was about to black out. You guys are there. <laughs> and I love blacking out, man. It was the best. It was so good. I, I don't know why you guys aren't blacked out right now. You should black out. It's so great. Because you know how most days you're like, I wish I were dead, but not forever, you know? <laughs> six hours or something, you know? Come back, try again next tomorrow, you know? So I'm walking down the street and this dude stops me, I'm about to black out, and he goes, give me your money, and I go like this. No, thank you, and just walk around. <laughs> I politely declined a mugging. <laughs> And I'm assuming it worked because the guy was probably like, oh my God, I didn't realize I was mugging a first grader. All right. <laughs> so, so then when I had to get sober, I moved from there two blocks over to Boys Town and got involved in gay recovery, which is just the most accepting, loving, like gracious people I've ever met in my life. It was the opposite of Wrigleyville. So great. And there I met my best friend in recovery, this guy named Wayne. And Wayne, the first day I met him, he still had the handcuff marks on his wrist <laughs> from the night before when he had crashed his Audi and tried to get the cops to shoot him. <laughs> and they didn't, which is how you know that Wayne is white. <laughs> It's like, it's super important to have wild friends because their stories are the best, you know what I mean? Like, normal friends, their stories will be like, you won't believe the way my boss looked at me today. <laughs> but your wild friends will be like, you won't believe the amount of money I'm embezzling. I'm like, I want that. <laughs> I want that story. <laughs> and I learned this early on because, and this is true, in third grade, my, this kid came up to me, this kid named Mike, Third grade, picture a third grader, and he comes up to me on the playground and he goes, hey, I have a great psychiatrist. You should take one of his cards. <laughs> and he had stolen a stack of business cards from his psychiatrist. So not only was he in seeing a psychiatrist in third grade, he was stealing from him as a prey. <laughs> I was like, this is my best friend for the rest of my life. <laughs> That's the funniest thing in the world. None of us could ever, ever do that because you have to be in third grade to make it perfect. You know what I mean? <laughs> so good. So Wayne loved meth. Couldn't get enough of the stuff. <laughs> he, <laughs> he did so much meth that he got good at computers. 
<laughs> You're my favorite person alive. That's, you know what, that's a really specific amount of meth, right? Because you don't do enough, you're just a normal guy. If you do too much, you end up worshiping VCRs. And that's a whole other... <laughs> this is hard for your family. <laughs> but so Wayne, he, he, this is what he did. He worked for this insurance firm, and he, he took all... He was the IT guy, and he took all their computers and created a lock-safe system that only he could access... So they had to keep paying him to fix their computers, do you understand? So they were like, he was extorting them for their computer system. <laughs> yeah. Which is how he got meth rich, which is a lot of, you know, it's great. Because <laughs> we were getting sober together and when you're getting sober, all you do is like shake and smoke cigarettes and complain. That's the whole thing. <laughs> So we would just do that in diners together and he would like buy me hamburgers all the time. It was a really beautiful, for me, a beautiful relationship. <laughs> One time I did have this experience where uh, I went to his house and he was hooking up with a guy that looked exactly like me. <laughs> the most confident person I'd ever seen in my life. And I don't know if you've met the you that believes in himself, but it is humiliating. He looked so good, perfect hair. He had a puka shell necklace and it worked. Like, that's, in, that's like wearing a tire iron for an earring. You're like, this guy's so hot, he fuck makes it work. I don't know how. He was so confident, he goes to my friend, he's playing PlayStation, he goes, Wayne, get me a pizza. What, what are you, Rick Ross? Like, who talks like that <laughs> to another human being? <laughs> That's how confident he was in their relationship. This is how confident I am in my relationship. The other day, I uh, accidentally called my girlfriend by the dog's name. <laughs> something you do when you're feeling real good about it. You don't usually make mistakes like that. You know what I mean? And it wasn't like she was in the other room so I could play it off. I was looking right in her eyes. I go, hey, Cody, uh-oh. That's the dog's name. Two, two, two weeks later, she goes, uh, hey, Mort, when's the dog's birthday? I go, August 16th. Everybody knows that. But I should have pretended like I didn't know because then she asked me what her birthday was. <laughs> yeah. Like a 1980s comic, <laughs> I didn't know. I go, trick question, you don't have a birthday. <laughs> it's June 19th, she has a birthday. <laughs> so the best thing about Wayne, and the rest of the set is Wayne stories, by the way, so. <laughs> an hour away and stuff. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, give it up for the old boy. He's still alive by some miracle. All right, so we're hanging out with Wayne. We're on a bus in Chicago. There's an, he, Wayne was so sweet, he would like, he didn't understand my sexuality, which I'm straight, it's boring. There's not much to understand, you know? But he's, there's an attractive lady on the bus and he goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah? How about her? <laughs> I don't know, I'm not too bad. What are you gonna say, man? And then he goes, I bet you wanna see her clit. <laughs> oh boy, okay. Short answer, yes, haha, <laughs> sure. <laughs> totally, of course. If she popped it out, I wouldn't be like, get that out of here, gal, you know? <laughs> I'd take a gander at the old lady, you know? <laughs> I'd size it up like, you know, a, you know, a jeweler's loop or whatever. <laughs> and I've just never been like, oh, let me see that clit, you know, it's not. <laughs> And I'm not clit shaming here. This is not what they're beautiful, you know, I, I just. 
I've never been like, is it long and sensitive? You know, I'm not, it's not. Because straight dudes are selfish, right? Like, there's no straight dude who's been like, <laughs> oh, brother me. <laughs> I'm a clit guy. <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> Check it out, why don't you come on down to the man cave? <laughs> Tons of posters of clits everywhere. <laughs> whoa, 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 don't go, don't go. <laughs> come on, feel the vibe. You remember Miss Clit 1994 and uh... Play Clit Magazine, right? We all have a garden finding that from your stepdad's closet, or remember? Remember the hill? Oh, you thought this was a normal CIA shirt? <laughs> no, it says a uh, Clit Inspector Academy. <laughs> whoa, 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 don't go, don't go, don't go. Don't go. Stay with me, brother. <laughs> I come down here to get away from the old ball and clit, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> One time I go, Wayne, still Wayne, we're still with Wayne. I go, Wayne, what's the craziest sexual experience you've ever had? And he goes, oh, I had an 11 way. I was like, that's a very specific way to describe an orgy. He goes, yeah, and listen to this. There was an unattractive guy there and we told him he could stay, but he couldn't touch any of us. But he could jack off in the corner. Oh. Well, that's like heartbreakingly mean. <laughs> and also pretty nice, actually. That's pretty, pretty nice. Because if 11 women came up to me and were like, hey, Mort, um. <laughs> we've all got some bad news. <laughs> um, we are gonna make love in front of you. <laughs> but, but. But you can't touch any of us. That would be the greatest night of a hundred lifetimes. I'm horny. That's that joke. You understand that, right? That makes sense that I'm horny. What happened to all the horny comedy? You know? Where did it go, right? I mean, just worry about this generation, you know what I mean? Where's their porkies, you know? How are they gonna get strong and tough like us if they don't have, uh, you know, sexual assault thinly disguised as comedy? What are they gonna do, you know? More sad than funny, I guess. <laughs> it's like, cut it, cut it out of the special. Any, anytime somebody goes, oh. Yeah, I, so alcoholism, it runs in my family, or should I say sprints, because it kills us. We die. From it. <laughs> we die. My, uh, my grandpa, this is true, he died of alcoholism outside of an insane asylum. Oh. Which is not as funny as it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> it's also the most Irish sentence you can say. <laughs> Happy St. Pat's, everybody. <laughs> yeah, so my dad got sober and then I, I had to get sober because it was so fun for so long, but then stuff started happening. Like one time I threw up so hard, I sprained my groin, you know, that kind of stuff <laughs> that you didn't know was a thing. I didn't know I could sprain it. I don't know you could sprain anything by throwing up. I, apparently so, yeah, you can do that. So then I just had all, this was like super nervous all the time, but also drunk. So I was like Don Knotts, but high on pills. <laughs> just like, oh, oh, brother, I don't know if I can make it. Maybe a handful of Percocet will make this day tolerable. I imagine Don Knotts eats pills weird. I don't know. Yeah, I'm doing Knotts in 2022, motherfuckers. It's yeah, so I don't know, man, it, you know, I, I ended up having to like learn some stuff about myself because uh, 
For example, I found out that I was afraid, and I had to admit that, because I'd, I'd been afraid my entire life, and I'd never said it out loud. And I don't know about you guys, but it's been a scary few years, right? So I recommend that you acknowledge that you are afraid sometimes. Yeah, that's an important thing. Because you have two choices, which you either say I'm afraid or you turn into the guy who's like, I had to shake my son, he reminded me of me! <laughs> Don't wanna be that guy to say, I feel scared now. I, traffic actually makes me feel scared, not angry. Wow. Wow. You know, have a revelation about yourself. Because it's actually not all anger. All right, moving past it. And then this other, so my whole life, all of my emotions, they felt too big. Like too big for my body, too afraid, too angry, too horny, you know, all this stuff. <laughs> but then I learned, I realized, I was taught that if you sit in silence with these emotions, after a while they'll start to dissipate. And you'll find this part inside you that is really ex like peaceful and tranquil and you can just kind of rest there. And that's really our birthright as human beings. And they don't tell you that because they can't sell it to you. <laughs> but now I think I'm too spiritual. Because uh, I do shit like sage my cats, you know? <laughs> That's how much of like a middle-aged female Los Angeles psychic I am now. That's, <laughs> this is what I do. I have two cats. Uh, I, not only do I look like I have cats, I do, I totally do. <laughs> one's a sweetie, one's a cutie. <laughs> yeah, that's how I tell them apart. <laughs> Which one are you? Oh, you're cute, okay, you're Kevin. <laughs> Samantha and Kevin, those are their names. Uh, Kevin is a girl, which we found out on, on International Women's Day. They had told me it was a, a boy, and then they're like, no, we, it was actually, it's a girl. I was like, okay, we're not changing the name, because well, there's no reason to give an animal's gender at all. Like, you know what I mean? The weirdest example of that is if you're walking down the street, there'll be like a, like a good-looking dog, and you'll be like, oh, that's a beautiful dog. Like, what, what breed is he? And the lady will go, uh, it's a she. <laughs> Which she's basically saying like, did you even look at my dog's pussy? <laughs> Hello, I didn't put flowers and jewelry all over it for you not be able to tell. This is a woman dog. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not a click guy. I apologize. <laughs> So I did learn this too, this is an important thing, I learned this from spirituality, which is that if you're, if you're pointing at someone, remember that there's three fingers pointing back at you, and your thumb is pointing to the ground. <laughs> Where the devil lives. <laughs> the devil wants to come up and suck that thumb. <laughs> Sucking thumbs. <laughs> Devil loves sucking thumbs. He can't get enough. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Devil loves three things. Lies, my man Putin, and sucking thumbs. <laughs> People don't know this, but this is, that's actually the etymology of the thumbs up. That's where it comes from, is you're saying like, my thumb's all good, devil didn't suck it. I'm good. <laughs> thumbs down, no. Well, devil's been sucking, that's nice. <laughs> I used to work at Blockbuster Video because I'm 130 years old. <laughs> I don't know why I look like I'm 28. I don't know what's happening. I might be immortal at this point. I don't know when. I don't know when you find out. You know what I mean? Like, I guess when your kids' kids die, I guess, and you're like, oh no! <laughs> There's a bunch of bad stuff, you know? <laughs> Working at Blockbuster was uh, pretty bad. Pretty bad. They played, this Blockbuster I worked at played Smooth by Rob Thomas and Santana 
four times an hour. <laughs> I've had two panic attacks in my life and one of them was scored by well, there's a hot one. <laughs> oh, Lord. It's four times an hour. That means if I've been at work at three, hour, three hours, I've heard that song 12 times. <laughs> that is assault. That is lawfully not... Rob Thomas didn't listen to that song 12 times. <laughs> he heard it once. It was like, it's got those smooth Thomas golden tones. But then he flew off to Malibu. You know what I mean? Like, he wasn't... There. Well, there was one thing I loved about Blockbuster a lot, actually, which was that there was this kid who came in every week, and he was this little blonde boy with, like, a bowl haircut and bright blue eyes, and his shirt said, Cat Dog. You guys remember Cat Dog? Yeah, the Nickelodeon show. And he kicked the door in, and he'd go, Do you guys have Cat Dog videos? <laughs> he go, Yes. Yeah, buddy, they're right there. And he'd go, Yeah! And he'd go like a rifle through her real crazy. <laughs> Grab it, cat dog! That's right. And then like halfway through, his mom would come in and she looked exhausted, by the way. She was like, who knows how many times this kid said cat dog this week. Because he just said it 90 times to me and we just met him. But she would look at him and she would laugh. And I just thought like that takes so much grace and like patience and dignity to be able to do that, you know? And I always think, like, we should, we should be like that kid. Like, be him. And if you can't be him, then be his mom. You know? <laughs> How is there a siren during the poignant part of this bit? <laughs> um, yeah, so I, uh, I worked at this other video store in Chicago in Boys Town that sold a wild amount of pornography. <laughs> And I didn't, we didn't have the internet at this time. This is how poor I was at this point. So one day I brought home a little video home with me called Art School Sluts. <laughs> <laughs> Which that tells you my tastes. And I stand behind that, you know? I... <laughs> So I made sure all my roommates were gone and I sit down on the couch and I'm ready to enjoy myself to these <laughs> to burgeoning young artists. <laughs> and then there's a car out here and I looked out the window and I'm like, oh, it's a van. And they were playing this song super loud. Oh, what a night. <laughs> I never had somebody play a song at me sarcastically before, you know? <laughs> So the other thing about this, yeah. So this video store rented all this porn and my favorite one was this video called Romans. And it had this really buff gladiator on it. And the tagline was, when in Rome, dot, 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 all caps, fuck men. <laughs> yeah, which is just great vacation advice. That's all, that's all that is. Because Italians are so, if you're there and you're not fucking men, you're being kind of a jerk. They're so <laughs> attractive. Italian people are so attractive. I can't believe that people look like me still exist. You know what I mean? <laughs> like they should have fucked me into extinction, do you know? <laughs> and they're like making all these just like elegant sports cars you drive under the sun, you know? I think that's why people like me invented computers, because we're like, we gotta compete with some kind of... <laughs> something that keeps people inside and makes them pale and equal, you know? <laughs> but so this video, Romans, I, I hope there are sequels to it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I hope there's like uh, just a hot guy in a farm. Don't count your chickens before you fuck men. <laughs> Hot guy at a lemonade stand. When life gives you lemons, fuck me! <laughs> it's so brilliant too, because they took the metaphor of when in Rome do as the Romans do, and they made it literal. <laughs> you know? I've never seen that in any literature in my life. Like, Pynchon would be like, oh, that's quite clever, actually. That's quite... <laughs> Let's 
talking about bullies earlier. I never really got bullied that much, uh, but I do remember kids are brilliantly vicious. Like, it's amazing. I still remember in seventh grade, this kid turns to this other kid and he goes, man, you smell like open booty. <laughs> Oh my God, that is the perfect bird. It's so visceral, it's timeless. Shakespeare would be like, that's quite clever. I, I can't believe it. If he would have said that to me, I'd still be in the shower right now just scrubbing it off. Like, why did he think that? Why did he think open booty? Why open? Why would he say open like that? But I, I did have a bunch of teens call me Harry Potter on the street the other day. In their defense, I had my wand and my cape and I was being proudly anti-trans. I'm staying political, baby! <laughs> that would be funny if Harry, the character, was anti-trans. That would really come out of nowhere. You know what I mean? All right, stay on track, stay on track. Yeah, this kid, this teenager called me Harry Potter. As, I'm not a tough guy. I would destroy a 14 year old. You know what I mean? I'm a full grown man. Like, that is insane to come at me like that. You know? Like, you know what I've been thinking about all day, kid? I've been thinking about how I'm afraid of marriage and that fear of commitment is actually preventing me from having true intimacy. Yeah. Yeah. What have you been thinking about, Pokemon? Like, I'll turn you upside down. You know what I mean? Like, that's the level of rage that I can exhibit, you know? And then this, this dude did call me a cuck a little while ago, this guy. And it wasn't a teenager, it was an adult man, which is ridiculous, called me a cuck. But I had a pretty good, I think I had a pretty good response. Like, I'm a stand up, you know what I mean? I had a clever comeback. I go, uh. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a cop. I'm not a cock. <laughs> I'm not a cock. I'm not a cock! I'm not a cock! I'm not a cock! I'm not a fucking cock! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.